I am. I uh, live in this lovely town at Neilsville. I also worked for the Towns Association for, I guess, almost 30 years. I no longer work for the Towns Association. I did, however, get asked about a month ago to give a speech on an issue that impacts on every town official in this room, and that is transportation. And uh, in doing that, I put together a flyer that I just handed out. I hope I got enough for all of you. If you don't have one, I'll make sure you get one. I think it's important that certain things be discussed out in the open uh, in this state um, and that those issues be discussed recognizing that rural Wisconsin and certainly Clark County has a fear and should have a fear of what is occurring in transportation in this state. I think it's safe to say, and all the statistics will tell you this, that we are seeing a marked decline in the amount of money that is going into local transportation from the state and a marked increase in money going to the state highway system. And I threw out to you since 1993 that uh, those numbers have gone from where we all used to get between towns, counties, cities, and villages. We used to get 36% of the, that pot. Today, and projected in 2015, we're going to get 24% of the pot. Uh, as you can see, a marked decline. Now, besides seeing that marked decline, a couple other things should, should certainly harvest here in Clark County. One of them is that Clark County along the Grant County are the two poorest counties with the most miles of town road. In order to fund those roads, you need money. You can't get money if at one hand the legislature places a freeze on property, tax increases, and at the same time does this decline we just talked about, and then uh, to add injury to a bad situation, you look at what the state's really doing to fund their transportation system, and for the majors, what they're doing is they're bonding, bonding. I have one of my famous governors used to say, I'm a builder, and I used to say, you're a bonder, is what you are, and that's of course what's happening. The state is increasing its bonding debt load. And I, plan, I laid these all out in the summary. And for those of you who might want to challenge me, and that's fine, I would hope to be challenged, I would refer you to the State Fiscal Bureau and the Department of Transportation Studies. Now, I know there's reasons why uh, these things happen and why they're continuing to happen. The first one is, I, I hope I'm not hurting anybody here and, and, and busting a bubble, but let's recognize that in the four caucuses in the legislature and in the gubernatorial races, gubernatorial position, that they receive huge amounts of money from the road builders, from the bridge builders. Okay, I hope you all understand that. Now, I'll hear legislators say, oh, I don't take any money from no road builder. I don't take any money from no road builder or bridge builder. I don't do any of that. Then you ask them, well, what about your caucus fund? Do you take any money from your caucus fund? Well, yeah, I take a few thousand dollars from the caucus fund. Where do you think that caucus fund gets its money? From Santa Claus? No, it gets it from the big money sources and in the area of transportation, that are the bridge builders and the uh, road builders. Now, I don't have a problem at all with that if everybody recognizes that and if all legislators admit to that, okay? But when the policy starts shifting like it is dramatically now, you have to ask the question, what is it that we need to do to get the attention of the legislators and those who are running for office about how to fund local 
city, village, town, roads, local transit. The continual bonding uh, is a problem. And why it's really a problem is because those people who live off those bonds are not town boards or county boards. They're again being funded. That money goes to fund state highways, state bridges. And looking at statistically in 2003, and I point this out on page 7 of that document, in 2003, the state debt service was 7.6%. It's now projected by 2023 to be up to 24%. So, and you say, well, why is that important, Ernest? Give me a, give me a reason in the world why that's important. The reason it's important is because as that debt load raises, there's less money in the pot for local road aids, you know, your 2,000 and some dollars a mile, because it's not there, all right? It's being, the bonding is starting to eat up the transportation fund. I think the other thing to remember is that Wisconsin, and this I point out on page seven as well, is Wisconsin has chosen not to raise the gas tax or it's chosen not to raise any of the registration fees commensurate with its neighbors. And on page seven, I point out that the average car in this state pays about $254 a year in registration and gas tax. And as I note down the line there to the states that surround us, and in case of our good friends in Minnesota, they're at $470 a car. Now, what does that tell you? It tells you that those folks are being asked to spend more money on transportation than you are. All right? And as long as the bonding continues, the people who are interested in state highways, they don't care about whether we're lowest or highest in registration fee or sales tax or whatever. As long as the bonding is holding out, they don't care. Now someday, I predict somewhere in the early 2020s, somebody's going to wake up and smell the alfalfa and is going to say, wait a minute, we can't keep doing this. And I submit to you, today is when you've got to wake up and smell it. I have no fish to fry in this thing. I'm long since retired. I don't frankly care. I you know if you have your legislative candidates of either party, I don't care. If they ignore this issue, go down to Madison and, you know, just say I don't know anything about transportation. But I don't want anybody to say I didn't get informed. You know, when I went down to the legislature many, many years ago, people didn't tell you these things. They didn't tell you these things. You didn't have a first week uh, analysis to look at where by Clark County, it's the second poorest county in the state. They didn't tell me that. They didn't tell me that Clark County has the second lowest number of post high school graduate folks. Okay? And, and I give you all these statistics in here to hopefully tell you in some ways what Clark County is in this deal we're dealing with with transportation. I give you this information with the hopes that the legislative candidates and that you all will decide at some point in time, enough's enough. We have to get more money into local transportation in order to meet the needs of our town roads, county roads, whatever. If we don't do that, if we don't do that, we will have ultimately Iowa's, Iowa's, Wisconsin. I think you all know what that means if you don't. Years ago, they used to say, if you're in Iowa, you're driving through, stay through. Don't stop. Because the local roads were terrible. And I don't want that image of Wisconsin, the Iowization of our roads. And, and that, I think, is what we're going to get to if we don't start uh, addressing this issue of the fund. Does that all make sense to you?
Does it? If it doesn't, I'll be more than glad to stick around and to try to. But I, if you want to question this stuff or you want to get into this, uh, please do because it's so important. Remember, the number one budget item for town is roads. Three quarters of your budget is roads. And the wear and tear on those roads, the use of those roads, the funding of those roads is your responsibility. And uh, I'm hoping that maybe this puts a little fire underneath. 